520. 520. I just keep trusting my Lord. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 520. in my mind I saw the dessert two dessert tables that's hard to get off my mind so I promise I'll go as slow as I can we, we hope you stay we're having dinner afterwards we have we call it our annual Thanksgiving dinner and we're just thankful and we don't make a big deal out of being thankful we make a big deal out of being thankful every day of the year but we like to do it as a church, so we hope that you can stay. If you can't stay, go buy something and bring it and then leave. <laughs> Get you back. No, hope you can stay, really. If you can't, we, if you need, hey, if you really need to go, take something and go. We, we want you to at least have a, you know, a good 
taste in your mouth. Get it about the church. If you need um, help, there's a chair, a lift chair to get downstairs. If you need to drive around to that main level, you can do that. You can drop off. If there's a, I think that place might be taking the handicapped spot. If you need to drive around and drop off at either door, we can get you in. We can wheel you. We've got a big cart. We can lay you on the cart and get you to work. <laughs> Going. Usually his table's on. But hey, some of you don't laugh all week. You might as well laugh when you come to church. I see it on your faces. Some of you are so offended when you laugh at church. Like, you're supposed to do that? I tell you what, if, if heaven looks like you, I'm having second thoughts. I, I'm, I'm assuming heaven's a happy place. Amen. That's why I'm going, and I hope that you're way down the block from me. Ready? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day. The Bible says this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's your day, Lord. It's the Lord's day. For us, it's a day that we have been coming together for years. We study the Bible. We preach the Bible. We sing the psalms. We listen to music. We give. We fellowship. We laugh. But sometimes we cry, we shout, we, we make decisions. We see in our lives that there's something that needs to change. And I pray today would be no different. We're thankful that we can gather after the service and eat together. But now we give you this service so that what you want to do in our lives, we would let you. <coughs> Lord, none of us, none of us are perfect. None of us are what we ought to be. But we know that you can help us get closer to what we ought to be. So please do that today. Thank you for our guests that are here. Thank you for everyone that worked hard and that made food. And we just want to eat so that you get glory. And we thank you, Lord, that you took care of our biggest problem. Our biggest problem was dying and going to hell and paying for our sins forever. But you took care of that. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ <coughs> died for us. We couldn't die for us. We're sinners, but Christ came and died. Thank you. That is reason enough to be thankful. Help us to see everything that we ought to be thankful for. Bless our day, please, Lord. Be with those who can't be here if they're sick. Be with those that aren't here because they're traveling. But thank you for every person that's sitting here today. I pray this and I ask it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Page 538 in your hymnals. Blessed be the name, 538.
speakers are plugged and the instruments are loud, but you still sound good. If you're visiting with us today, we're glad you're here. We hope that you can stay. And if you have any questions, see us right afterwards. If you have food that needs to go somewhere, if you have uh, any issues, we want to try to help you. If you have a bulletin, no choir, no choir. No choir. It's, it's a holiday. It's there, but that's canceled for the day. Evening service, we will be here tonight. If you can make it back for 6 o'clock, we'd love to have you. And we want you to make sure that you know you're invited to the dinner. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to be a certain age, certain size. You just have to want to eat with us and put up with us. And we hope that you stay so you're invited. And if we run out of food, there's a subway across the street. There's a gas station across the street. We'll figure something out. On the back side of the bulletin, many things going on. Jail service in the morning, at night, tomorrow, nursing home service, Wednesday, our midweek service, no King's Kids for the week, Thanksgiving on Thursday, there's a Miller's Mary Manor service on the 26th, jail on the 27th, boom, November's gone, Christmas is almost here. Ushers, would you come? Is it still snowing? Was it snowing? A little bit? You okay? You look terrible Wednesday night. Am I supposed to say that? You were just Savannah, you look like. You never look good, but you look worse. Aren't you glad you're not an usher? You look awful. Were you sick and did you get over it? It's Man, did you see him? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I forgot we're live on the air. <laughs> act like it, quit, you look great. Pray with me, pray with me. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the healing that you're doing in Jeremy and others and I pray, I think of Loretta and Jim McGee and others that need healing, Lord, in their bodies, please give them healing. Thank you for uh, what you give us that we can give back and invest and be a good steward of what you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, that you take care of us. And we've never had to beg. We've never had to fret or worry. We may have begged. We may have fretted. We may have worried. But we know that... Uh, you said, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So thank you. And may we just love you today and see you and rejoice in you. Thank you for our guests. Thank you for those folks that come and, and are here. And we take them for granted. We don't mean to. They just keep showing up. And I'm thankful for them. Bless this day. Speak to us. Please, Holy Spirit. If someone's here not sure of heaven, show them how they can be absolutely certain that they're going to heaven when they die. And God, for the rest of us, show us how to live so that we know that we're absolutely certain that God is pleased with our life. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you, choir. Page 539 in your hymnals, All That Thrills My Soul is Jesus. Page 539. Let's all stand, shall we? On the first verse, junior church and primary church, you may be dismissed. smell the food. <laughs> Psalm 103. One, for, for that reason, I've picked my shortest sermon. Once I smelled that food, let's just pray. I love turkey. 
You are what you eat. I like fruit cake. I do. Those ones you get at the dollar store, some of my favorite food. I love it. I like beef jerky. I'm giving you food. You are what you eat. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. This is a hard service because we're supposed to be thankful all the time and I don't want to just bring up something that you ought to do yearly. But it is Thanksgiving week and we're about to eat and be thankful and some of you will celebrate on Thursday. Maybe you're celebrating early. I just want to give you something to think about. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. I call this what's best for your soul. What's best for your soul. You said, uh, you say, well, I think the Bible says, does it not, that, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. But that's true. That's, it says not, it is not best, it says it is not good. The Bible says that we should not fear him which can kill the body, but we ought to rather fear him that can send both soul and body to hell doesn't say that's the best thing, but I guess I would classify that as the best thing if your soul didn't go to hell. But while you're here, there's something that's best for your soul. If you've got Psalm 103, I'm not going to read the entire psalm. I'm going to jump through it and hit and miss some verses. So if you would do that with me, I would greatly appreciate it. Verse 1, Psalm 103, verse 1. He writes, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Let's do this. Let's give you something to think about why we're reading. Let's just get this out of the way. When he uses the word bless, it means to kneel, or if you will, bow down. When he says, oh, my soul. Number one, it's personal. That which we do for God when we bless him or we kneel, that's personal. He's saying it as a matter of fact. Like, pay attention. Pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention to how he blesses you. Pay attention to what he does for you. He says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And then in the second verse, he says, forget. Not. And that's talking about paying attention. But he's kind of uh, like, remember your grandmother? Maybe your mom would say, oh my. Well, that doesn't really mean anything. It just calls attention to what was said. So he says, excuse me, verse 1. He says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. That's what ought to be done. And we ought to kneel and we ought to bow before God. And he says in verse 2, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Verse 3, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 5, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Jump down, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Verse 10. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according 
to our iniquities, verse 12 and 13. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us, verse 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him, verse 22. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. Pray with me. Father, I ask you for help. I ask you to give me the power that, that I need to communicate this in a way that will be helpful to every person that sits here or hears this, be they in the nursery, be they at home, be they on the beach, be they off in some cabin, wherever they might be watching this. I want this because it's your word. I can't be the help, but your word can be. So as I do, I'm just the donkey that carries Jesus. So use me, Lord, to carry this message to these folks. I pray this, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. What blessings has God given you? Here, here's what you're going to start naming. I got a house. I got a job. I got stuff. You know, when you read this psalm, David, we believe he wrote this psalm, he doesn't start naming his stuff. You been shopping lately? They started Black Friday in July. People are shopping online. They're in the stores. They're buying. I mean, even Lowe's. The lumber store is falling for this. There's stuff in the aisle. And it's all about buying people or yourself stuff. Bless you, oh my soul. Amy will go on these sneezing fits, and I'll go, bless you. I can hear her. Bless you. Bless you. She'll go, you don't have to bless me anymore, so I'm not going to quit blessing you, and I don't want God to quit blessing me. There's so much in our lives that we take for granted. You know, when I go home, we take for granted that we can, if it's dark, we can flip on the light switch and get light. We don't have to light a candle. We don't have to light a little oil lamp. I wouldn't have been a good one of those cowboys or pioneers or whatever they call them. Because, I, you know, I'm all into the clapper. Man, if you don't have to touch anything, just walk in the house and speak. Now I've got one of those things you talk to, and I'm trying to get her to do everything. But, but think about it. I can say to that little thing on a table, hey, play Christmas music, and she'll start playing Christmas music. We take for granted what we have. We take for granted that if it's cold outside, we can turn the heat up. We take for granted that if it's warm outside, and it's going to be someday. And then when it gets so warm out, we take for granted that we can turn the air conditioning up and be cool. Some of us are cool without air conditioning, but we can turn up the air conditioning, and be cool. I can open up the refrigerator. I can open up the cupboards. And my wife will tell you, in our house, we keep stuff on the counter. Not only do we stuff the fridge full of stuff and stuff the cupboards full of stuff, but we have so much stuff, it won't fit in the cupboards, so we leave it on top of the counter. So now I don't have to open the refrigerator door. I don't have to open the cupboard doors. I can just scan the counter, and I see my girlfriend's there, little Debbie. <laughs> little Debbie makes some of my favorite stuff. And I just have to decide what I want. I've got another girlfriend, and don't call her a boyfriend. She's a girlfriend. Pepperidge Farm. I know it's an odd name, but she can cook. When I get up in the morning, I can 
take a shower and I can turn on the hot water. And thank God there's only two of us in the house. And the house had an extra big water heater because both of us can take a shower hot as long as we want. I can go to my closet and pick through a ton of clothes. It's not I don't have anything to wear. It's which one. It's, it's to the point where the clothes are packed in the closet. It's to the point where all my suits are in another closet. So I have to pick a shirt from one closet and go to another closet. You say, you're rich. I am. I go to another closet and I have all my suits there. And I go through all my suits and pick a suit. Then I go through all my ties. Man, I can't even see them all. I just have them draped over big hooks and I, I literally pour through them like I'm pouring through a forest to pick a tie. If I have to go somewhere, I can jump in the car. Before I jump in the car, I don't have to jump in the car. I can hit a button and start the car so it's running before I get in the car. Listen to me. We take that stuff for granted. If we forget any of God's benefits or if we forget His blessings, we will end up being unthankful. God has blessed you. Quit your moaning. Quit your griping. Quit your complaining. You sound like a lady I know. She goes to the grocery store to cook for Thanksgiving. She decides to buy a turkey to make for her family for Thanksgiving. Here's her problem. She goes the day before Thanksgiving. She gets to the store. She shops through the turkeys. All she can find are little bitty turkeys. Everybody's bought the great big ones that you can't even haul that they use for boat anchors when they're not turkeys. <laughs> She's looking through these little turkeys all she sees is little one. She sees a stock boy stocking meat. She walks over to him. She says to him, don't these turkeys get any bigger? The stock boy responds, no, ma'am, they're dead. <laughs> that woman had more food in front of her than most third world countries do. But we complain about the turkey being too little or the pie being overcooked or no cheesecake Cool Whip at the store. That's personal. I'll get into that later. She got angry because what she saw wasn't good enough. You listen to me. If we don't get into the habit of thanking God for what we do have, you got to listen to this very carefully. If we don't get into the habit of thanking God for what we do have, we will become unthankful for what we don't have. David writes this psalm, to get us into the habit of being thankful now. That's why he says, oh, my soul. It affected him now. He said, bless the Lord. He says it three times in this chapter. Verse 1, verse 2, and verse 22. He says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. David isn't writing about being thankful for his family. There's nothing wrong with that. David's not writing about being thankful for his home. There's nothing wrong with that. David's not writing about being thankful for the stuff, his possessions. There's nothing wrong with that. David's not writing about being thankful for his job. David thanks God. Listen to me. David thanks God for the forgiveness of sin. He realized what was most important to his soul. Verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. 
He didn't say, thank you, God, for a fancy chariot. Thank you, God, for a wonderful palace. That would be worth thanking Him for. Thank you, God, that I will be. I believe at this time He was not the King of Israel. He could have said, thank you, God, that Your promise tells me I will be the King of Israel. I'll live in a fantastic palace. What does he thank God for? Verse 10, 11, and 12. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. So what does David say? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You and I need to get thankful now. I saw someone. I said, I need to be thankful to you before you die. They said, what do you mean? I said, when you die, I'm going to say this. He said, well, didn't you say it to your cousin? Yeah, but there are other people in my life I know I'm going to lose, and I know there's something they need to hear while they're alive. They said, well, what is it? I said, I want to thank you for being in my life. And this person was in my life growing up. I said, I want to thank you for all you've done for me. The places you took me, you played ball with me, you helped raise me. I just want you to know that I see that and remember that. And I want to thank you for that. He didn't know what to say. Too bad we say that when they're dead doesn't mean it's not true. It just means they don't enjoy it like they should. Thank God that we have a God that can rescue us from destruction. Verse 4, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. That's what David is thanking God for. Thank God we have a God who can show us mercy and grace. Verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. You and I need to thank God for that now while we can. Oh, my soul. David is focusing on those things rather on the stuff that we think of because you can't lose what he wrote about and the world can't take away what he wrote about. You could lose everything you have. Listen to me. You should be thankful for your spouse. You could lose them. You should be thankful for your car. Somebody else may not think of it what you think of it, and they may run right into you. Boom, it's gone. Your house can catch fire while you're cooking turkey. Your oven can have a fit and blow up. Hear about a guy that died. He was cutting trees down with his chainsaw. His chainsaw blew up and killed them. You're making that up. Why would I make that up? It's a true story. You don't know. Listen to me. David laid up his treasure in heaven. Matthew chapter 6. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. Jesus said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. David spent several years of his life running from Saul. When King Saul tried to kill David, David went on the run. He refused to swivel around, retaliate, and take out Saul. When David wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He was going through that time when Saul was pursuing him like an animal on the hunt. When David realized that Saul had one thing in mind, one goal in mind, that was to kill him. David writes in Psalm 23, Yea, though though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What did he say? Thou art with me. You see, David saw what he's trying to get you and I to see. That God loves you. That God did everything he could. If you pray and you don't get that new um, shaver for Christmas that you think you ought to get, why do you think God doesn't love you? 
When God sent his son, to pay for your sins, when God made a promise to you that he will be slow to anger, why are you fussing about stuff? Listen, let me say it again. If we don't get into the habit of thanking God for what we do have, we will become unthankful for what we don't have. And if you keep focusing on what you don't have, you'll get unthankful, you get all worked up, you think God's a cheaty God, God's a selfish God. God's man, I can't believe he's being so mean to me. You can be rich, you can be healthy, you can be wise, but you still can go to hell. The Bible says, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Well, I got saved. I had a ton of money. I was playing in the band. I played every weekend. I told you I played for years and years. And out of all those years, seven or eight years, I had two weekends I didn't play. And when we played, I made a ton of money. Plus, I worked a job. When I got saved, I had all the money I needed. I just didn't realize I didn't have heaven. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know what's best for your soul? If you're not saved, what's best for your soul is to ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior so that you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. And if you know that, you know what's best for your soul right now? Be thankful for what you have. We're going to eat. Listen to me. I'm not done with you yet. That Bible close doesn't mean anything. I could have another one stuck back there. Watch me. Watch me. If I hear you complain about dinner, that's not going to go over very well. Here's why. We're not charging you a cent. I can't believe we ran out of potatoes. Hey, get over yourself. Happens to me every year. I think it's real serious, like a marital problem. Pastor, can I talk to you? Sure. Look there, the green beans are almost gone. I'll go, you talking to me? <laughs> if you don't get in the habit of blessing the Lord, of getting on your knee and showing everybody that God is God and you aren't, if you don't get in the habit of thanking him right now for what he's given you, you're going to get into an ugly habit of being unthankful for what you don't have. Thank God. You say, oh, it's going to snow. We're going to have to shovel. Thank God you can shovel. Someone said to me, be careful. You're getting older now. You don't want to have a heart attack shoveling snow. I don't want to have a heart attack watching somebody else shovel my snow. Man, at least I want to go doing something. Like my dad would say, walk in the barber shop. Dad had a shop full. He's got a comb in one hand, a clipper in the other, and he'd go, hey, this is my son, the Baptist preacher. He's praying that I'll die right here. They would look at me, and I'd say, wait, let's clarify that. I'm not praying he'll die. I'm praying he'll die there. He wanted to die working. He was thankful for what he had. Are you thankful? Are you thankful? Name, you know what? If you name something you have, here's what you'll name. I'm thankful for my kids. Thankful for my grandkids. Thankful for my job. Psalm 103, he never touches that. You know why? That stuff doesn't really thrill your soul. Because your boss could come into you and go, you know what? You've been an excellent employee for 112 years. But we're closing. You can get mad, you can fuss, you can say, that's not fair. And they'll wave, bye, bye. Here's a 
nice little pack of hot cocoa just in, for all your years of service. <laughs> Bye. I can't believe it. And you can get bitter and unthankful. That's why you ought to bless the Lord for what can't be taken away. We got a note in our mailbox, very unusual. Wasn't addressed, nothing on it. It was a pink note, sealed. Took it out of the mailbox. I opened it up. It said, thank you for taking care of the house that we built. God bless you. They lost their house. They lost their jobs. Our house went into foreclosure, so we bought it. The neighbor said, you know what? We see them drive by all the time. They come down this circle and make a circle. And we know it's them, and they look at the house, and then they leave. Well, they left us a note. Thank you for taking care of the house that we built. Hey, you could lose everything you have, but you can't lose the fact that Jesus died for you, and he paid for your sins, and God is full of grace and mercy. So you and I need to spend our time being thankful for what God has done for us. Amen. Don't worry about all that other stuff. Because as long as you know you're going to heaven, because God is a gracious God, spend your time right now. Right now. Blessing God with all your soul. Be thankful. Thank but, Get in the habit, would you please? Get in the habit of saying thank you. Thank you. When someone does something for you, say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank your wife. If she washes your clothes, thank her. If she irons your clothes, thank her. My wife's been doing it for almost 40 years. I still thank her. And I think if anybody deserves to have their underwear washed and their dishes clean it's me just checking to see if you're listening <laughs> don't ever get out of the habit don't ever forget what God does for you don't ever forget what other people do for you your head bowed your eyes closed every head bowed every eye closed listen to me your head bowed your eyes closed the thing you got to take care of today if 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 it's not covered you got to make sure you're going to heaven when you die and if you don't know that, we could take a Bible and show you what the Bible says about that. You say, preacher, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I really didn't know you could be sure. I, I, I hope I go. I, I want to be good enough to get there. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, Ephesians 2.8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. If you're planning to get there based upon what you can do, you're, you're not. God said no. Jesus said, John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if you don't know you're getting to heaven because of what Jesus did for you, you're not going to get there. doesn't matter who told you that. doesn't matter how long you've been hearing it. It's all, it's all hinged on what the Bible says. You might be here today and you're not sure you're going to heaven. Would you just, all I'm going to do is pray for you. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to say, hey, thank you, lady. Thank you. I'm just going to say thank you. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. You say, preacher, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I'm not sure when I die that God will let me in. Well, we can show you how you could be sure of that. We would love to show you. We've got people here. I'll do it if I need to. I'll take the Bible and show you what the Bible says about getting to heaven. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. You say, preacher, I'm here today. I'm not sure of that. I am not sure I'm going to heaven. But I would like to know that. If that's you, right where you're at with your head bowed, your eyes closed, would you just slip your hand up? Say, preacher, that's me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I would like to be sure. I'm not sure. If that's you, would you just hold it up, slip it up so I can see it? Say, hey, that, that's me. I don't know that. I don't know. I want to know that. Of course I want to go. Who wouldn't want to go to heaven when they die? Preacher, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Here's my hand. Would you just remember me? Would you just think of me? Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Preacher, would you see it? Here's my hand. Say, okay. Then if that's what you know, do you know 
you're blessing the Lord with your soul over stuff that can't be taken away? Or are you spending your time moaning and groaning and griping and complaining about stuff that doesn't really matter anyways? Jesus didn't say it, but the Bible says it. All that is in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Make sure you're thanking God for the right things. Make sure you're blessing, blessing God with your whole soul. Don't forget, don't forget what he's done for you. You say, preacher, I need help in that area. I am not as thankful as I should be. I, I forget, I take a lot for granted that he does. And, and I need to make sure that, that I thank God more and thank others more. If that's you, would you raise your hand, pray for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All over, all over, up and down. Preacher, God speak to me. God speak to me. I haven't raised it yet. I'm going to raise it now. God speak to me. If you haven't raised it a minute ago, put it up, put it up. Thank you. Up and down. Preacher, God speak to me. God speak to me. I need to take care of that. Here's, here's how we'd like you to take care of that. We have what we call an invitation. The piano plays and the, the, you'll stand. And, and the thing that you need to do is just come to the altar and say, okay, Lord. I want to do what you want. Show me. Here I am. I want to practice what I heard preached today. Help me to do better at it. That's all we're asking. Dear Father, I pray for this crowd that decisions that will be best for them will be made today by them. Because I ask it in Christ's name. You're standing, your head bowed, your eyes closed, pianos playing. We don't want you looking. Might just be easier if no one's looking. But if you're coming, yeah, look, yeah pick up your eyes and pick up your head and get down the, the aisle and get to this altar. Whether you kneel here, whether you sit on a pew, whether you stand up here, just do something that you know only you can do for your soul. God's not going to force this on your soul. You, you, let's just say it. You need to force your soul to be thankful. You need to force your soul to bless God, to kneel before him and realize he's done everything that's important and you just want to bless him and praise him and thank him as she plays. God speak in your heart. You come, you come, you come. Come on, there's room. God speak in your heart. You come, you come. God speak in your heart. Come on. soul needs it needs you to bless God and thank God she's gonna play it through one more time in case you thought coming last verse you come on this verse I'm not gonna keep fighting with you we're gonna quit eventually but we'll give you this verse she's playing it through if you need to come say man I just need to get up there and really take care of this so I make sure uh, I'm doing what I need to do that's right yes you do that's right see if you're thinking that take care of it Look up a minute, would you? I'm going to close, and we're going to be done. If you're going to the dinner, we please stay if you can. Please stay. We want you to stay. We have such a good time. The food is so good. We're going to pray when we get down there, though, so just give us a minute. When they're all ready, we'll thank the Lord down there officially. We really hope you can stay, okay? Pray with me. Dear Father, thank you for your word. I, I in my life, for me, I would like to tell myself that I'm thankful enough, but I'm not. Help me to bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Help it just to take over my soul. David was just so thrilled that the Lord blessed him, and he knelt before him, and he knew that God would preserve him and protect him and use him, and, and the things important in his life were covered. God forgave him. God showed him grace and mercy. God removed his sins as far from him as he could. And, and, and he said, he even delivered me from destruction. Thank you, Lord, for that. Help us to be thankful like that, like David. And, and in our soul, in our soul, bless you as much and as best we can. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the food we're about to eat. I pray this. 
In Jesus' name, amen.